another worship experience is Sunday morning yet again and we are the people of God in the presence of God do you hear that in the background the Lord is good I need some declarers in this place who can declare that the Lord is good the Lord is good all of the time and all of the time the Lord is good do I have anybody today that don't mind praising God and testifying to the fact that we know that our God is good our God is good because he woke us up this morning he started us on our way he protected us last night he kept us throughout all the night he blessed us he gave us brand new grace and brand new worship and can I say that if you are alive today you have a right to bless God here's what the psalmist said let the let us praise God with all that we have praise him with the strings and the instruments praise him with the drum and the temper let everything that's your part right there let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord I'm just gonna pause right there and if you still got breath in your body if you got if you got breath in your lungs and blood running through your veins that's your moment right there to praise God I dare you and challenge you I don't care where you are and what you're going through it's a moment to praise God because the Bible says when praises go up I wish I had a Bible reader when praises go up blessings come down thank you God for blessing us and keeping us thank you for worshiping with us this morning we bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior come on third Baptist friends family wherever you are in the virtual remote world bless God because blessing God makes room for more has the Lord been good to anybody has the Lord blessed anybody has the Lord took care of anybody then raise up your hands lift your head back and say thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all you're getting ready to yeah God we love you we worship you we adore you we magnify you I came in this place today with full charge full energy to tell my God thank you because you've been good hey when I look back over my life and I see where you brought me from and what you brought me through I just came to tell you thank you eyes have not seen ears have not heard what you're getting ready to do in the future because we believe that you're not done can I just tell somebody that better days are on the way the rain will subside the storm will pass over the virus will be eradicated and better days hey God have 
have his way That's when things start happening I stopped looking at back then I let go and I let go I'd Let God have his way Let go Let go And let God Let go let God, you gotta let go. Let God, let go, and let God, you gotta let go, and let God, let go, and let God, let go, let God. You gotta let go, let God, oh my brother, let go, and let God. Let go, oh, let go, and let God go. And he cares for you, and he loves you, and he wants to see you win. He wants to see you win. You gotta let go. it is to be back I am here today with one of our fellow ministers and who has been a blessing to this great house the Reverend Dr. Joel Mitchell and his family Reverend Dr. Naomi Mitchell and their children Jasper and Jacoby Sydney they have all been a blessing to the house of Third Baptist I must admit I am filled with a bit of melancholy it is bittersweet that we stand here today. I've come today as the pastor of Third Baptist Church of Chicago to tell you our congregation. That Dr. Mitchell has accepted the call to the pastorate and is now pastoring his own church, amen. We are grateful and we bless God for all of the blessings of this great family. We are excited to see the next in the, in the lives of the Mitchells. Amen. God always has a next. And we are grateful both to release them into the pastorate and to pray with them and walk with them. But let me tell you, they will always be Third Baptist. Amen. Amen. And we're grateful. I'm going to let Dr. Mitchell tell you about his new assignment. But we are grateful and we have come to thank God and to pray over them in the next ahead. Dr. Mitchell. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Third Baptist. You know I love you. And if I can just steal a line from my pastor, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But uh, we give God thanks and praise for this opportunity to be here today. I want to first thank God for my friend and my brother. Reverend Tion T. T. D. Hughes, uh, the great pastor of this great house. Uh, and yes, we are excited to know that uh, God is still in the blessing business. As you all know, uh, my family and I, we came, a, it's been about maybe five or six years um, since we've, six years since we've come to Third Baptist, Third, 
I can't even get my words together. I'm so full. But Reverend Naomi and I, we have been um, on a pilgrimage. As many of you all know, I attended Morgan, not Morgan, McCormick Theological Seminary. And one of our first courses was called Pilgrimage and Faithfulness. And it talked about how God meets you where you are and then he takes you on a pilgrimage. And so Naomi and I, we have been in ministry now for over 20 years. And we've seen some rough waters, we've seen some dry places and this pilgrimage. But I'm so glad that he directed us to come to Third Baptist Church. Um, because in our wilderness, when we were at our lowest point, he directed us here and we were able to find the oasis in the desert. And so we're so grateful to be here to make this announcement, but as Pastor has said, uh, we're just going away on assignment. We are still connected to Third Baptist Church of Chicago. Our love resides here in this house. I'm so grateful to um, Pastor Raglan, and then I'm now glad for my brother, Pastor Hughes, who have loved on us and has supported us, not only me, but Reverend Naomi and our children, Jasper, Jacoby, and Sydney. We all found a home here yeah. at Third Baptist Church of Chicago because this is a great house. And so before I start crying, I just wanna say thank you again for all of your love and support. You have been supporting us down through the years. As many of you all know, the boys just graduated and are now attending Morehouse Baptist Church or Morehouse University. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Morehouse uh, College Mor Morehouse in Atlanta. Morehouse is an institution and a church. Amen. Yes, yes. And I just thank you for blessing them. So many of you all blessed them, sent cards and well wishes. Uh, then you blessed Naomi when she graduated with her doctorate. And thank you for even loving on Sydney as she is now a junior at Kenwood High School. And so we thank you for just blessing our entire family. And, and we will never forget that. So I just want to say thank you and God bless you, and we love you. And yes, we are now pastoring at Morgan Park Baptist Church, 11025 South Bell, right up the road. So please keep us in your prayers, call out our name, and we'll be so grateful and happy that you did. Amen. Let us pray together as a congregation as we send them off with well wishes. We want to bless them and pray that God will walk with them on this journey. The pastorate is a beautiful burden. Amen. That's what it is. It is beautiful, but it is a hard, hard labor. But we know that God, God walks before us. God walks in front of us. And God makes easy and successful our way. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for this great family. God, we thank you for all of them. Thank you for Joel and thank you for Naomi. Thank you for Jasper. Thank you for Jacoby. Thank you for Sydney, God. We pray that as you have blessed them all this, these many years long, God, we know like the elders used to say, you didn't bring us this far to leave us now. So God, we pray today as a church that as they embark on this new journey, God, as they walk into waters yet unknown, God, as they take up the mantle to pastor your church and to lead your people and to bless your name. God, that you would walk with them and make easy and successful their way. We pray, God, that every resource they are in need of, that their hand will provide. We pray, God, that when they are in need, both as a church and as a family, God, that you would fill their lives with such rich richness and with such joy, with such peace, and with every resource they need to be successful. God, raise up a new mantle in their church. Raise up a new element. Raise up new leaders and new volunteers, new vision, God. Raise up new purpose and, God, new possibility. God, let us use the imagination that comes from you. And God, let us think on the things that make you proud and God, that please you the most. God, if there be any thought, let us think on the things that are of you. Let us think about peace and let us think about justice. Let us think about ministry. Let us think about love and joy and peace and harmony. 
God, we pray for that church and for their ministry. God, we pray that you would pour out such a blessing on their life that they won't even have a room enough to receive. Let us pray for them day and night. Let us think of them day and night. Let us toy with them, labor with them, and pray with them and for them. And God, use us as a resource that we might pour into them and pour into their ministry. God, now we give your name the honor. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we adore you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, we lift you up and we thank you for all that you've done, for all that you're doing, and for all that you're getting ready to do. God, bless this great church. Bless this great family. Bless these preachers. Bless these pastors. And walk with them all the days of their life. God, make thy face to shine upon them. And God, lift up your confidence upon them. And give them peace. And give them rest. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Honor them in the name of Jesus. Make ways out of no way. God, build rivers in the desert. Hey, God, bring resources in dry places. In the name of Jesus, we give your name the glory. And we give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let every heart, let every heart, let every heart, let every believer say amen. Amen and amen. And it is so. Brother Pastor, bless you. God bless you. Amen. Go forth. Make the Lord proud. God bless you. Love you. God bless you, Third Baptist. This is the blessed part of service when we gather together honor God in our giving. Can I say the Lord has been good to us. Throughout this pandemic, we have not missed a step or a beat. And we thank God for continuing to be good to us, to be faithful to his people. I pray that God continues to bless you also and that God pours upon you the richness of his bountiful blessings all the day long. I pray that the Lord continues to keep you in these moments and bless you. And then that, we, uh, that God puts it on our hearts to bless his house and to bless his church so that we might bless his people. Let us pray together. God, our Father, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for the many ways in which you bless us. And we know, God, we have come to know that your goodness is far beyond monetary gift. That God, you bless us with health and with strength. God, you bless us with encouragement. God, you, you bless us with keeping power. You bless us to sustain our lives. And God, you are the keeper of our lives and the sustainer of our days. God, we can do nothing without you. But God, we are able to do anything and everything in you and through you. God, we pray now that you would bless every giver today. Bless every gift and God, that you would bless this, your great house we call Third Baptist Church of Chicago. We need you in such a mighty and special way to continue to show your face and to show your powerful might in these moments. God, keep us, keep us encouraged, uplifted, God, and keep us blessed, and God, keep us reaching toward the mark of the high calling, which is found in Christ Jesus. Bless every gift now, bless every gift and every giver. And we'll be sure, careful always to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, amen, amen. Now don't forget, if you want to bless the church with uh, your device, mobile device, electronically, you can do that through RAM and Cash App. You can just scan your phone right there at the screen and your device will transition you into those applications where you can bless the church electronically. And don't forget, we have many, many multiple ways for you to be a blessing. You can text to give. You can cash out the church. You can make arrangements to drop it off at the finance office. You can mail it, and you can even drop it in our after-hour slot. However you do it, I pray that the Lord blesses you and place upon your heart to continue to be a blessing to God and to the kingdom of God so that we might be a blessing to God's people. God bless you and thank you. Amen.
Good morning, Third Baptist Church of Chicago. What a joy it is to be here today. And we're doing something that I love to do, and that is to bless our babies. I thank you, God, for the privilege of having this baby. And before I introduce my baby, I want you to know that I stand here to thank God for babies everywhere. I ask him that he will bless them and keep them. They're going through so much. And we're so grateful to God that we're able to come into our sanctuary in peace and know that we can bless our babies, that you hear us, that you're taking care of us, and that you will watch over us. And so today, we have one of our darling little babies with us, and her name is Serenity A. A. Woods. And her mom is holding her because she is sound asleep. So we're not going to disturb her in any way. She is asleep and resting safely in the arms of her mom. Her mother's name is India Boyton, and her dad's name is Tian Woods, okay? I am Reverend Marguerite Jenkins, Associate Minister at Third Baptist Church, and on my left is Reverend T.D. Hughes, and together, we are going to ask the Lord to bless this wonderful occasion. Grandma, granddad, and other relatives are here, and we thank God for that. We thank God for this opportunity. Our pastor will say a prayer for us and for this baby. In the name of Christ, we pray, and we give you glory, Lord. What a blessing it is to bless children of God. And let me just say it is scriptural. It's biblical. Remember when Jesus was in the town and he told the disciples, bring the children unto me. Forbid them not to come unto me. For to be like them is to be the kingdom of God. And we've come today not only as her extended family, that's what her church family is, we are her extended family. It takes a village to raise a child. She has more than one father, amen. She has more than one mother, she has more than one uncle, more than one aunt. There are a lot of us who make up her family. And if one of us should fall, the other one will stand. And if another one would fall, we shall rise together as her community. That's our prayer today, amen. That's our petition. And we wanna pray for Serenity's protection not only her protection, we want to pray for her direction. Hey, her Lord, hallelujah. We want to pray that every footstep she takes, the Lord blesses and the Lord keeps and the Lord covers. We, we want to pray her going out and her coming in. We, we want to pray that whatever she touches and whatever she desires, that the Lord will bless. Is that your prayer? That's our prayer. Let us pray. God, thank you for Serenity's life. Thank you for her mother and thank you for her father who were the conduits and the instruments to get her here. But God, we know that we don't make babies. God, babies come from you. We're reminded through scripture that before we were formed in our mother's womb, you knew us, you knew our name, you, you prospered us, and you gave us purpose and destiny and protection and provision. God, you are the guider of our footsteps. You are the keeper of our days. 
sustainer of our lives. We pray for serenity today. That you would bless every footstep she takes. God, let everything that she touch becomes blessed. God, we pray that you would make her a strong branch of Zion. Let God, her leaves and branches overflow each other's lives. Let God, no incident, no accident come her way. God, we pray that even in the places where she might fall down, that you would use them as blessings and lessons that she may learn more of you. God, we pray that you would fill her eyes with vision. That God, you would fill her mind with imagination. That you would fill her hands with purpose. Fill her heart with compassion. God, go before her. Make easy and successful her way. God, we pray that you would bless her life. Keep her from all hurt, all danger all pain keep her god bless her not only that we pray that you would bless her mother bless her father bless her grandparents bless her uncles and aunts bless her nieces and nephews bless her uncles and aunties bless her friends god bless her church family that we might raise up and bless her life whatever she might lack and in the need of God use us to bless her life God we pray mighty that's the name of your son Jesus God you would touch her in every way God remind her that she is somebody she is something because of you God God let no person diminish her womanhood let no person diminish her character or her calling or her purpose God speak destiny into her life God will be sure to give your name the glory hey to give your name the honor and to give your name the praise God we bless you in advance and we pray that you would bless her keep her cover her and ordain her footsteps in you the Lord we give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, in the mighty, matchless, wonderful, marvelous name of Jesus we pray. Let every heart who believes, let every heart that believes say amen, amen, and amen. We worship you, Lord. We adore you. We magnify you. We thank you. Hey, we bless you. Bless her. Bless her. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. It is so. Amen. Good afternoon, Third Baptist Church of Chicago. Hello, everyone. God bless you. Uh, yes, my name is Reverend Joel Mitchell, and I bring you greetings from Morgan Park Baptist Church. We are here at this moment for altar call, and as you all know, this month, we are celebrating the men of Third Baptist Church of Chicago, amen? So let's just give God a big amen and God bless you for all of the men of Third Baptist Church of Chicago. But we don't wanna leave our sisters out. We are praying for everybody this morning. So I ask that this moment that you would please, wherever you may be, that you would bow your heads and lift up your hearts as we go to the throne in grace. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence at this time to say thank you. Father God, we thank you right now for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, oh God, for another opportunity to come back in the house of prayer. Father God, we know that things have been challenging over these past 18 months. We've been dealing with the pandemic, but Lord, we thank you because you are yet God. We thank you because we still have life and life more abundantly. We thank you because when we woke up this morning, we had a reasonable portion of health and strength. When we woke up this morning, we could go to the kitchen and find something to eat. We thank you because when we woke up this morning, we had clothes to put on our back. And so Lord, it is with those thoughts in mind that we come right now at this moment to give you thanks and praise. Father God, we thank you today for Third Baptist Church of Chicago. I thank you, oh God, for my friend and brother, 
Reverend Tian Hughes, oh God, I thank you for his pastoral leadership. I thank you for giving him the power and presence of mind to pastor during a pandemic. Father God, I thank you for giving him wisdom, knowledge, and insight as to how to lead your people. Lord God, I thank you for his wife who stands alongside. I thank you for the baby girls, Lord God. And then, Lord, we thank you, Father, for Third Baptist Church of Chicago. We understand that at this very moment, there are people who are sick. There are people who are shut in. There are people who are on their bereavement journey. But Lord God, we thank you right now because weeping may endure for a night, but oh joy comes in the morning. So Lord, we come with joyful hearts to give you thanks and praise for blessing us, for keeping us, and for allowing us to be in the fellowship of the saints. Now, Lord God, as we look around, we don't want to be selfish this morning. We know that there are some people out there who do not have it as well as we do. There are some people who are homeless. There are some people who are hungry. There are some people who are locked in jail. Lord God, we pray right now that you would just look across the length and breadth of this city, oh God. We pray that you would bless right now in the name of Jesus. There's some man, some woman, a boy, a girl that do not know you in the pardoning of their sins. So Lord, we pray that you would bless right now as only you can. We pray that you would look across the war-torn parts of our country. We pray that you would bless all of those who have been impacted by Hurricane Ida. Lord God, we pray that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus. Then Lord God, you said that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and pray that you would hear from heaven and that you would heal the land. Lord God, our land needs a healing and we know that you are yet able to heal, sanctify, and deliver. So we thank you now, oh God. It is in the name of Jesus that we come to the throne. It is in the name of Jesus that we ask all of these prayers. It is in the name of Jesus that we say thank you, that we say hallelujah, that we bless your name. It is in Jesus' name, and for his sake we do pray. Let every heart say amen. Come on, say it like you mean it. I know you might be in the living room, but come on, throw your hands back and say amen. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and glory to God. Amen. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of God behind the sacred desk. Let me call in reverence and humility and say thank you to our media team. Amen. To our media director, Courtney Trotter, and our sound techs, Lamar and Martel, and our musicians, Nick and Will. We are grateful. Thank you for Reverend Michael and for our tech assistant, Bridget. Amen. It takes a team of people to do this work. We are grateful. Amen. Join me in the Old Testament book of Joshua. Amen. Joshua, the Old Testament. Joshua. Joshua, right after the book of Deuteronomy. Joshua, chapter 24. It's men's month. Amen. In the life of Third Baptist, it's men's month. It is the month where we encourage and preach pray and support men. Amen. Amen, somebody. Men need to be supported. Amen. Join me in Joshua chapter 24. We have a bit of reading today, and uh, I'm going to read it. Amen. And pray that you would read it with me uh, so that we might bless the Lord together. Joshua 24, I'll start reading it verse 1 and commence in verse 15 Joshua 24 I'll be reading from the NRSV the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible and it reads then Joshua gathered all of the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders the heads, the judges and the officers of Israel and they presented themselves before God and Joshua said to all of the people, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah, and his sons Abraham and Nahor, 
lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all of the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did its midst. And afterwards, I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and with horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and he made the sea come upon them and cover them. Your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards, you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you up to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I handed them over to you. And you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, the son of Zippar of Moab, invited Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you. So I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you and also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Jebusites, the, Hitt the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I handed them all over to you. I sent, I sent the hornet ahead of you which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was only by your sword or by your bow. If I gave you a land to which you have not belonged and towns to which you had not built and you, and you live in them, you eat the fruit of their vineyards and their olive yards that you did not plant now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods of your ancestors. Serve the, the, your ancestors served before, uh, before you beyond the river in the Egyptian and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose to this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now are living. But as for me, <laughs> that's the best part, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I feel like saying that one more time. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, especially the doing of his holy word. Thank God for the word of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for grace and for mercy. We thank you for provision, resource, energy, and your spirit. God, there is nothing that we can do for you without you. And so we summon your spirit today that you would fall fresh now on your people. And take your preacher, I pray, and hide me so far behind and beneath cross so only thy face might be seen breathe on my words that they might be thine. God use me for your glory 
And God, we pray that you would take all of the glory and leave for us the blessing. We pray these prayers through the mighty matchless name of your son, Jesus, so that through him one day we might not only be what you desire, but one day fully we might be what you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. It's men's month. I want to try my hand at it today. Amen. You've heard the text read. I want to preach from these profound texts that they found in the book of Joshua. Uh, the mission of a man. Amen. The mission of a man. The mission of a man. Have you seen the future of your promised land? To believe in something that has not yet happened is to believe that there is a land of promise. All of us, whether we are men, women, children or adults, all of us have a desired promised land. And if there is anyone who lacks thoughts of a promised land, it is a person that lacks vision and imagination of a land that is better and filled with promise. The best thinker is the one who thinks about thinking. <laughs> they, they think about things until the things that they think about become a reality. They think about a land and a promised land in their thoughts. Such is the scenery and the scenario cast in the text of Joshua, the promise bearer who carries the promises of God is now being blessed by God in his endeavor. And God, because God has blessed him and God has blessed the people, God makes three promises to Joshua that are noteworthy for the sake of proper theological context. God says to Joshua, every place that the sole of your feet tread upon, I have given you as I promised Moses, promise number one. Then God says, after that, no one will be able to stand against you all of the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will also be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you, promise number two. And then God tells Joshua, make sure that you take my commandments with you and do not depart from them. Don't turn left and don't turn right and you will be successful wherever you go. God says meditate on my instructions day and night and never let them depart from your mouth and they and I will make you prosperous and you shall be successful. Finally, God says be strong and courageous do not be frightened or dismayed for the lord your god is with you promise number three in summary if you have read this text appropriately and digested it through your mental context and contour in the summary god says i will give you the land promise number one and I will stand in the way of your enemy as protection and no one will be able to harm you, promise number two. And finally, God says, if you listen to me and follow me and you will, you will not only prosper, but you will be successful in everything that you do and wherever you go, promise number three. Now, the truth be told, there are many types of promises that can be established between two parties, but for the sake 
of this conversation today. I want to raise up two of them, uh, two of the promises that are valid and credible to our conversation. The first is an unconditional promise. The promise in an unconditional promise, the promise has no bearing of responsibility on the beneficiary. Yeah, uh, the promiser, in this case, God has decided to give the desired outcome with no action or obligation on behalf of the recipient. In the second, uh, the second is a conditional promise. Uh, it, it is a promise that carries what we call a pre-described and a prescribed prerequisite that must be fulfilled by the recipient of the promise before the promise can be unlocked. Here it is. God tells Joshua, if you, if you do these things, I, the Lord, will fulfill my end of the bargain simply because God says, because I am a faithful God. I, I like the way the book of Numbers puts it about God. God says that the book of Numbers says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. God has promised it, and will he not do it? God has spoken it, and will he not fulfill it? That might well be a blessing for somebody today. If God, watch this, made you a promise, and since God is faithful, and since God does what he says, and says what he does, then that means that it's not God's end of the bargain that's gone unfulfilled, because watch this, God cannot declare himself faithful and then not be faithful. Here it is. Could it be that God has already provided the provision and the promise but it's our commitment to pay the prescribed the prerequisite that unlocks the problem can I help somebody today you might be very well the key of the door you think everybody else locked you out of I feel like preaching here today that you might be the key you might be the blessing you might be in your own way but if you would respond faithfully God will unlock every door and restore and give and bless every promise in your life uh, I believe that reality such is the discourse displayed in the tension of the text Joshua's book is a book that looks uh, through the telescope of time and history and when God made a promise to a man named Joshua and Joshua becomes uh, the reflection and the model of God's promises to God's people Watch this. The Bible says that God blesses them and blesses Joshua because not only was God faithful to his promise, but Joshua was faithful to his word and commitment to God. So, so let me help somebody today come in for a minute. The, this reality reveals to us that it's not the words that come out of a man's mouth that makes him a man but rather it's the commitment to the words that comes out of his mouth that makes him a man god i feel like preaching here today i i, I hope i'm helping somebody because a real man will tell you right quick that there are some words i'll never have to utter because the body of my work um, speak for me the power of my presence talks for me and the tone of my voice has already been set forth not by my words but by my actions watch this I'll never have to walk in my house and say I'm the man of my house because everything I do in my house reflects and in my life reflects that I'm the man of my house I'll never have to tell my wife I'm the man because I treat my wife like I'm her man I wish I had some witnesses I'll never have to tell my children I'm your father because every Everything that I do and say and live by tells them I'm their father. I feel like preaching now. Reality is that is a real man is not just saying what we say, but it's doing something about what we say. Watch this. Uh, it is, and the tone of our voice is already set forth by the actions of my faithful commitment watch this to prophetically perform what i say in my life such is the homily hidden in the background of the text and that and that is that god watch this 
will never give you a pre uh, a prescribed prerequisite without giving you a predestined platform to fulfill it y'all didn't catch it watch this let me say it again god will never give you a prescribed prerequisite without giving you a predestined platform to fulfill what he called you to do L let me give it to you another way let me come down your road oh god will never call you to a conditional commitment without giving you the collateral cause to help you to be faithful in what god called you to let me help you right there. And watch this. God never asked you to do anything without giving you the road map to complete what he called you to do. That's what the Bible says, that our gifts make room for us. Because when God gives us a gift and when God blesses us to do something and when God calls us to do it, God will dig a road, a pathway for you to be successful in what God called you to do. Watch this. God says, not only am, am I going to give you a promise, but I say, but I'm going to provide the necessary provision to help you be faithful on your end of the commitment so that you can be successful. It's right there in the text. Watch this. The Bible says, God says to Joshua, watch this, take my commandments with you and, and do not depart from them. Don't turn left and don't turn right and then from them and you will be successful wherever you go and whatever you do, God says, meditate on my instructions day and night and never let them depart from your mouth and they and I will make you prosperous and you will be successful let me help some young man let me help some young person today you gotta sometimes turn off social media you you gotta get out of the DM you gotta meditate on God's word you gotta pray on God's scripture you gotta lean on God and ask God direct my path that's why the Bible says it this way lean not to your own understanding I wish I had a Bible reader but in all of your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path it's like that's what the God does it's like taking uh, an open book exam anybody ever took an open book exam because watch this the teacher has the right to test you to see uh, if what they have given you in information has translated into understanding but the teacher also has the prerogative you know Mike uh, the teacher has the prerogative since the teacher is both the giver of information and since the teacher is the tester of information watch this the teacher has uh, the divine prerogative to help you with the information they desire to plant in you and pluck out of you y'all didn't catch it watch this the teacher can test you but the same teacher that tests you can help you with the test is right there in the text God says if you want to be successful and if you want to be prosperous God says read the printed blueprint of what it means to have a successful and prosperous life God says take my word and my instruction and meditate it on meditate on it day and night sleep with it sleep on it sleep with it meditate eat with it drink with it pray with it stay with it and when you get done reading it think about it in your sleep God says if you want to have a successful life let me help some man today God says stop trying uh, to make a blueprint for your life because I've already given a blueprint for your life and since I created it since I called you since I made you I should be the only one to be able to tell you what to do with it for let me get the Bible here come in for a minute for thy word Lord to help me here is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto to my pathway I just want to help some men today to tell you stop worrying about all of the narratives about who you are don't don't listen to the media tell you about who you are and what you are and where you come from and what you deserve and what you don't do. God has given a blueprint over your life your your destiny your creation who you are your purpose in life is in the word of God you don't need to be authored a new destiny. God has already destined your life. Can I help you here? Now watch this. 
I've learned how to not listen to everybody uh, tell me who I am and what I am and where I belong. God help me. I feel good here. Watch this. Because when you know what God has meant for your life, you don't need nobody else to give you a new, a new narrative of your life. You don't need somebody to give you a rewrite to the what God has already written in your life. Uh, I suppose, I suppose that that's where we have to begin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, maybe, Nick, maybe we have to start asking whose report will you believe? I, I wish I had some witnesses here. Uh, and if we ought to be honest in the lower church, there are a whole lot of reports out there, aren't there? There are a whole lot of reports out there about men, about what we should be, about what we should say, about what we should wear, about how we should look. But watch this. I've come to testify to the reality that there are some there's something dangerous in the world. Yeah, there's something life-changing in the world. There's something prophetically powerful when a man loves God and with all of his heart and his mind and his soul and he loves his neighbors like he loves himself. Like Jesus, he becomes the fulfillment of the law of God with the very currency of his life. He has become the down payment to the prerequisite that he paid with his life can I just tell somebody today that watch this I, I believe that there's something dangerous in the world when black men uh, know who they come from and they know who they belong to and they love God and they love their wives and their children and they love neighbors and they love church and they love God because when you know who you are in God you know all that you need to know for your life uh, I would like, I would like to give these uh, these few tokens before I get out of here. I, I want to give you these few things that I believe can help you be successful in God. I, I, I want to call some men today back to uh, the place of covenant renewal. That's, that's what Joshua is doing in the text yeah, before he takes them over into the land of Cana. He said, let, let me just get a few things straight. Huh? Let, let's, let's have some transparency and some accountability because watch this. He said, I can't let you walk into your new land while you take the old stuff that got you in the wilderness. God, I feel good here. I don't care if you say amen or not, but watch this. That some of us need to be reminded you ought to not take your wilderness baggage into your promised land. God help me here. Somebody ought to go back to your house and take some stuff out of your closet. That's a metaphor. I'm not talking about your closet. I'm talking about your life. Before God takes you into a promised land, God wants to make sure you clean all of the stuff out your closet that got you in the wilderness. You're going to have to take backbiting out of your closet. You're going to have to take strong Rightfulness out of your closet. You're going to have to take violence out of your You're going to have to take disrespect, dishonor, and deceitfulness. You're going to have to take shadiness out of your closet if you want God to take you into your promised land. God have mercy. Joshua says, before you go into the land of Cana, you're going to have to leave what got you in the wilderness before I can take you to the promised land. God says, before you go over, watch this, watch this, before you go over, some things have to get out. God have mercy. I wish the men, before they realize that God is trying to take them somewhere, that they might go back and give, a watch this, evidence and say, some things can't go with me into the future. God have mercy. Some things cannot go in the promised land. Walk, walk around the text with me. Joshua gives some holy hints to help us respond to God earnestly. Watch this. First, Joshua says, Joshua says, watch this. The best way for you to report to duty is to serve God 
with sincerity and faithfulness by watch what he says he says by putting away all of the other gods that we served and you serve the only true living God I let me pause here parenthetically because I gotta help somebody because there's always a critic in the room in it yeah yeah there's always somebody talking about that's why I don't go to church that that's why I don't believe in God that that's why I don't believe in the Bible because it got it has all of these problems and the people in church are the people in church and they they don't they don't believe what they say but watch this let me help somebody everybody in the world serves a God God have mercy. I, I feel like preaching up in here. I, I'll take this robe off and run around by myself. But watch this. Everybody in here believes and serves a God. But watch this. Not every God that we serve is God. Y'all didn't catch it. Let me pause it, rewind it, say it again. Because every God, small G, that we serve is not big G God. Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can come closer down your road. Just because, watch this, you don't believe in church or the God of the church or the God of the Bible doesn't mean that you are not a worshiper of a God. Yeah, watch this. It just means that you've decided not to worship the God of the Bible, but you're worshiping your own God. And can I be honest in the Lord's church? Some of us, the God that we serve mo most is us, God. I knew that. Well, I knew you wasn't going to shout on that, but I I'll help you anyway because the truth of the matter is that most of us us serve the God of us uh, watch this when life is all about you and you got to get all that you want and it's all about you all of the time and you don't celebrate nobody else and you jealous when God bless it then guess what you're the God that you serve you are your own God and can I tell you the worst place to be is in the servitude and the solidarity of your own godliness because you can never be as good as God or good at all that's why we we need God to be God. Joshua says, Joshua says, watch this. Joshua says, he refers to the other gods that the Israelites worship on the other side of the river. And when you watch this, when you do biblical research of the other gods that they serve, all of the other gods, watch this, that they serve, watch this, they, 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 they serve them so that they may gain something. Did you catch that? Let me plant that in your spirit that they serve the other gods because they wanted to gain something. Come here for a minute. They serve the fertility God because, so that they could gain fertileness. They serve the God of youthfulness so that they could gain youth. They serve the God of prosperity so that they could gain prosperity. But here is another reality I want to give you about these other small G gods. These gods were sought out and not just because of game but watch this the people who served them uh, had to also give them something they, they had to bring them something the people had to offer them something to be God for them to be God may I suggest May I suggest that if you have to give a God something for them to be God, that's not God at all. Let me pause and, and let you catch that in your spirit. If you got to give a God something so that they can be God, that's not God. Watch this, because a real worshiper and a real believer will tell you that our God doesn't require us to give him anything to be God, for he's God all by himself. He's God in the morning. He's God in the midday. He's God at night. He's God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. He's God on Sunday. And if we don't bring him anything, he's still God. Watch this. Joshua says, the true and living God can only be served in one way. To serve God, you have to do it in sincerity and faithfulness and let me add this let me add this uh watch this you 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 know that your walk with god is grown and mature when you can serve god not for gain ah oh, god but 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 you serve god to give god something out of what you already gotten from his hand 
God have mercy. That watch this. That you don't serve God to gain something from God. You serve God to give God something from what you've already gained from his hand. Because of everything that you have, he's already provided. God says, watch this. Here the Bible says, you remember when Jesus looks at the servant, he says, oh, you've been faithful, servant. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant, for you've been faithful. Watch this, over a few things. God have mercy, and I'll make you a ruler over many things. Can I just pause uh, before I move forward and tell somebody, maybe the reason why God hasn't blessed you with the abundance is because you you fumbling over a few things. Yeah, God can't trust you with the few things he's already given you. Yeah, you don't even have a whole lot of money yet, and you won't uh, tithe, and you won't give, and you won't serve, and you won't give and you won't show up you can't be faith watch this why would God give you something more when you can't even handle the little bit he gave you but watch this I believe what the Bible says for the Bible says little becomes God help me somebody little becomes much when it's in the master's hand and just like watch this we want to be able to trust God let me help you today God needs to be able to trust us as much as we trust trust God have mercy here watch this but the reason why many of us aren't as blessed as we could be is because God has informed enough trust in us to give us all of the promises of our lives ah here it is watch this it's not the stuff that you rule over that make you faithful huh it's, 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 it's really the service of what you give that makes you faithful. Yeah, did, did, did you catch that? that? That it's not all of the things that you have that make you faithful. It's how you serve in what you have that makes you faithful. Watch this. Let me help some man here. It's a whole lot of gods out there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a whole lot of gods in the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a whole lot of gods, and I don't have to name all of them, but the moral of the story is this. Either we humbly serve God with sincere faithfulness, or the God who doesn't require something to be given to him to be known as God, or we serve other gods and the gods of our times that require more of us, and they do not bless us or prosper for us or give us life they take while we give here's the question people of God here's the question may I ask here's the question watch this which gods have you given your life to God have mercy which which God which of the gods have you given your service to which of the gods have you given your mind to? Which, which gods have you given your heart to? Which of the gods have you given you to? Joshua says, it's your choice now. Joshua gets to the edge of the river before they go over to Cana, and Joshua looks at the people and says, we got to have a man check. We, we got to have a woman check. We got to have a people check. Joshua looks at the people and says, it's your choice now. You, you have to choose. Watch this. Which God are you going to serve? Because the reality of what I've already prescribed is that either we serve God or we're serving a God. Joshua says, which one? And may I argue, that's a good place for the Lord's church to be. Joshua calls them to a place of uh, transport, transparency and accountability. And, and that's a good place for us to be with all that's going on in the world. We, we need, watch this, we need a few good men. 
Yeah, we, we need some good men to leave the small gods behind and choose the God of heaven. God, help me in here. Help your boy. We need some men that will choose God. We, we need some men who will choose God by marrying one woman and raising our children in the sight of God. Yeah, we need some men who will choose God and work for biblical justice and work for peace and shun violence and violent behavior. Yeah, we, we need some men to choose God that will serve in the Lord church without having to be begged and pumped and primed. We need some men who will stand on the Lord's side. We need some men who will choose God by loving what God loves and cares about what God cares about. We need some men that will choose God. Watch this. That even if choosing God means I got to reject my own self to be faithful to God we need a few good men I believe Will that if we had better men our streets would be better our homes would be better our schools would be better if better men would simply learn how to leave false gods and cling to the only God of heaven. Here it is. Watch this. I'm almost there. We need to get beyond serving a God. I, I, this, this popped in my thoughts. We, we need to get beyond serving a God for reward. Mm. And serve the God of heaven who is a God of relationship, not reward. Yeah, God, I feel good here. Because watch this, the God of relationship is, is not connected to a thing. Huh? The God of relationship is connected to a people. Yeah, there it is. He's connected to the pain of people, the struggles of people, the problems of people, the joys of people, the progress of people, the salvation of people. That's where we all need to get to. I don't want a God who just rewards me. I want a God who remembers me. Finally, I'm about to leave you now. Joshua says he gives the children of Israel a report card on God. Can I say that some of us have walked with God long enough that we become complacent with God? That, watch this, contentment breeds complacency. Yeah, yeah, watch this. You stay in a house long enough with a wife, you forget how to appreciate how good she is. God, I feel like helping some men here. Watch this. You stay in the house with a husband long enough. You forget sometimes how good in the sacrifices he has to make to make sure the house is good. When you are, when you stay in a situation long enough, you can become complacent and unappreciative to who and what it is. Some of us have walked with God so long. We become complacent with the Holy God. Yeah, yeah. Finally, Joshua, they've been the children of Israel, have walked with God a number of years now. He gets them to the edge of the river, and, and Joshua gives them a report card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says, watch this. Joshua says, it was God that saved you from Egypt. He says, it was God that led you across the Red Sea. It was God that cut your enemies off. It was God that fed you in the wilderness. It was God that clothed you and gave you life even in the place where only death happens. 
Uh, it was God that, that let you sip water from a rock. Uh, it was God that let you eat food from a cloud. Uh, it was God that walked you over the Jordan. Uh, it was God that fought and evicted your enemy uh, from the land. It was God that led you all this way. Uh, I don't know if you caught it, but I just want to tell somebody that you ought to pause and remember remember that it was God can I get a witness here sometimes we move too fast but sometimes it takes time to stop and think about it uh, can I get a witness here I, there are times when I have to slow down and be reminded uh, that it was God that kept me uh, that it was God that walked with me uh, that it was God that protected me uh, that it was God that took care of my life uh, do I have any company here that can give a report card on God huh? in your life is there anybody that can say I know it was God huh? that can say I know it was God huh? in my darkness huh? I know it was God huh? when I didn't have enough to pay it huh? but it still got paid huh? do I have any witnesses huh? that can look back and testify like the Israelites uh, it was God that got me out of the storm uh, it was God uh, that blessed me out of the rain uh, it was God uh, that put food on the table uh, it was God uh, that raised me from a bed of illness uh, it was God uh, that blessed me from cancer uh, it was God uh, that kept my children safe uh, it was God uh, that blessed my wife walk with him it was God that kept me sane in the midst of struggle it was God that kept me faithful in pain it was God that kept me believing when there was nothing it was God that made a table before me in the presence of my enemies it was God that even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death it was God who made a way it was God who kept me in the valley it was God who gave me vision when I could not see can I get a witness here who can look back over life and say I know it was God because nobody could bring me out uh, nobody could have saved me uh, nobody could have protected me uh, nobody could have healed me uh, I know it was God uh, who lifted me uh, who gave me uh, a new testimony uh, Joshua said uh, we need to check ourselves uh, and count ourselves uh, and discover uh, if we are still faithful uh, before God uh, takes us over into the promised land. Uh, God, Joshua looks at the people uh, and says it was God uh, who brought you. Uh, it was God uh, who carried you. Uh, it was God uh, who walked you over the river. Uh, it was God uh, that failed you, that fed you in the wilderness. Uh, it was God uh, that let you drink from a rock. Uh, that let you see in the darkness. Uh, it was God uh, that kept you uh, and walked with you. Uh, and Joshua says, uh, before we venture over uh, into the new land, uh, Joshua said, as for me, uh, which God will you serve? Uh, but as, uh, as for me uh, and my house, uh, we will uh, serve God. Uh, I wish I had a man in here with me uh, who can tell their household uh, as for us, uh, as for me, uh, as for my wife, uh, as for my girlfriend, uh, we will uh, serve God. Uh, you ought to just speak that uh, over somebody. Uh, speak over your life. Uh, say I will uh, serve God. Uh, speak that uh, over your wife. Uh, we will uh, 
serve God. Uh, speak that uh, over your girlfriend uh, until she becomes uh, your future wife. Uh, we will uh, serve God. Uh, speak that uh, over your children until they learn how. Uh, how to serve God we will we will serve God speak that in your house we will serve God speak that on your job over your career I will serve God speak that in your church in your ministry we will serve God let me leave you with this God if you serve God God will watch this serve you did you catch what I said the moment we sacrifice in serving God God will serve us not in submission but God will serve us in provision I feel like preaching here now God won't serve us uh, in submission, uh, but God will uh, serve us uh, in provision. Uh, the blessing, uh, this is what the Bible says, uh, of the Lord uh, maketh rich uh, and adds uh, no sorrow. Uh, give uh, and it will be given to you. Uh, good measure. I wish I had a Bible reader. Uh, I getting excited now. Uh, good measure. Uh, Press down, uh, shaken together, uh, running over. Uh, will he put in your lap? Uh, for with the measure uh, you use, uh, will be measured back to you. Uh, can I give you some more Bible? Uh, every good gift, uh, every perfect gift uh, is from above, uh, coming down from the Father uh, of the lights of whom there is no variation. Uh, needed to change uh, can I give you some more Bible uh, and my God uh, my God uh, will supply uh, all of my needs uh, according uh, to his riches in glory uh, can I give you some more Bible uh, and from the fullness uh, of God uh, we have received uh, the fullness uh, of grace uh, and mercy uh, Here's what you ought to do, uh, serve God, uh, and God will uh, serve you in return. Uh, I like the way uh, the psalmist said it, uh, great, uh, I feel like preaching now, uh, is thy faithfulness, uh, oh God, uh, my Father, uh, there is no shadow uh, or turning in thee, uh, thou changest, God, uh, Help your boy. Uh, thy change is not. Uh, thy compassion uh, faileth not. Uh, thou hast. Uh, thou will uh, forever be. Uh, great. Uh, great uh, is thy faithfulness. Uh, great uh, is thy faithfulness. Uh, morning. I wish I had some witnesses. Uh, morning. Uh, by morning. New mercies, I see. Oh, uh, I wish I had some witnesses. Uh, oh, uh, that I have needed. Uh, thy hand uh, has provided uh, great, great, uh, great uh, in thy faithfulness. Uh, morning uh, by morning, uh, I see uh, all that I need. Uh, thy hand. Uh, have provided bless God worship God serve God bless God and let God serve you hallelujah glory glory amen what a blessing thank you for joining us for remote worship amen the mission of a man amen May the Lord bless you real good. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You know what we've come to do now. The doors of this great church are open. <laughs>
to you. After we have done all that we've come to do, singing the songs of Zion, reading the word of God, preaching prophetically the power of God, we now yield this moment, open these doors, that you might join with us, the people of God, so that where we are, you are, and where we are together, we know God is. The word says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, touching and agreeing, there I am in the midst of them. Won't you come now, come now, come. Wherever you are, wherever you are, call us, leave us a message. We'll call you back and pray with you and receive you unto this great house. It's not about membership. It's about fellowship and discipleship because that's what God has called us to do. Go ye therefore into all the world, the four corners of the world, and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them what I have taught you to observe. That is the word of our God. That is the words from the mouth of Jesus Christ. That's what we've come today to do. We offer you Christ. Can I tell you, there is no, there is no safer place to be, no better place to be in the whole wide world than in the will of God and in the life of Jesus Christ. God have mercy. We thank you. We love you. We're grateful for you. Thank you again for joining us for this great worship service. We're taking steps to come back together. Worship. Stay tuned. Take your survey. Amen. We've sent a survey. We need you to take it seriously. Answer it because it's going to help us in these foundational steps to come back to gathered worship. Please, please, please be diligent. Remember those three things. Be prayerful, be hopeful, be patient. Your pastor is praying for you and with you that God who is with us and on our side will lead us into the future. God bless you again. Thank you for joining with us for worship. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for all of you, all of what you have done. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for your everlasting grace in our lives. God, we thank you for ordering our steps and keeping our steps. Thank you for protecting our lives and covering us and giving us every resource and provision needed to live our lives. God, if it had not been for you who was on our side, we don't know where we would be or what we would be doing. But we thank you for keeping us. Thank you for covering us. Thank you for inspiring us. And God, thank you for leading us. Thank you for all of the men of Third Baptist and men all of the over the world. God, bless us that we might be better men. And God, we might change the world in and through your name, Jesus Christ. God, we love you and thank you. And we ask these things in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Don't forget, if you want to bless the church through Ram or Cash App, you can scan your device right there at the screen, and your device will transition you where you can bless the church because we know that little becomes much when it's in the master's hand. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of grace with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be their majesty, dominion, and power henceforth now and forevermore. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify you. We give your name the glory and the honor and praise for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're getting ready to do. For eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what you have in store for them who love you and are the called according to your purpose. For we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Now on to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us to him be glory in the church world without end. name of Jesus Christ we love you and thank you we honor you we worship you we adore you we magnify you we glorify you we give your name the glory honor and